Hello guys, welcome, welcome to another episode of Ripster Daily Trade Recaps and Teachings. Small week guys, start of a small week, um, Wednesday is off, uh, no, Wednesday is half day, Thursday is holiday. So um, anyways, a good start of the week, good start of the week, most of the community was green today, we'll go through the trades, uh, only, only I think 15 or 16 percent people were red uh, in the community today, yeah, so there were only 15 percent people red in the community, so, um, so we had, uh, I was not on the voice this morning, but I was giving my guidance on the... Um, on the on the on my on, on my feed but anyways um, quick before we go into the trades and today's teachings let's do a quick introduction for anybody who's new to me new to my twitter or new to our community all these trade recaps and all these teachings uh, are from any trade ideas that i share on my twitter or or i share with you guys on my previous youtube videos or any ideas that we have if in we trading in our community or on our trading floor my ideas other traders ideas you know any trades i'm taking or i'm not taking or any trades that i'm just guiding the other traders um, through so we do not trade anything random we trade everything by a fixed fixed system my fixed trading system thousands of traders are um, you know Thousands of thousands of traders are using my system to trade consistently. It's three EMA clouds, and then um, you know we have fixed setups for every day trading, swing trading, investment. We have all of them. We have fixed fixed system. We do not trade anything random. You know it's all of our fixed systems. Every morning uh, before the market opens, me and my team we get up early. We make a game plan for the day. You can see the game plan for today. Today you can see Chewy, Gamey, SPR, Boeing, Amazon, Rivian, DKNG. Verizon snow among others and we follow this game plan we have an initial bias and based upon what market is showing us at the open we trade these setups accordingly we take long short calls puts so we trade stocks we trade options we do everything you know we also give the levels daily levels to the you know our traders for example today's apple levels were pretty pretty good you know we'll talk about how the apple was running all day and you can take these levels and with the EMA cloud system, you can trade on your own. These are the levels we provide the community every day. Then also we have our day two, day three, day two, day three setups. On um, and this is a strategy that I have been teaching for quite a while. And, um, you know, uh, this is, uh, I did a free webinar as well on the strategy. So we provide the levels for day two, day three setups. Nike was a pretty, pretty solid mover on our day two, day three, um, you know, uh, setup. And uh, VKTX, which is also one of our swing versus 50, was a pretty solid setup. So we'll, um, we usually find good setup winners through that. So um, we'll talk about it. We had uh, one loser today. I had one loser and then we had a bunch of winners. We'll go through all those. We will discuss that. So all right, so I, and I'm usually on um, I'm usually on voice first few hours. Um, this morning I was not on the voice. I had um, some uh, you know personal issues, so I was not on the voice. But I was guiding everybody um, on, on my feed. Um, you see my um, uh, alerts feed where I guide through all the trades. And of course I was on the trading floor. We were um, talking about all that. So anyways, uh, that was the introduction, guys. Let's start with the first play of the day. All right, guys. Uh, the first trade we're going to discuss is Chewy. So Chewy was gapping up, and um, it's it's the same setup. You know, it's the same story. You know, Chewy has been the Roaring Kitty. We already saw the same story happen a few days ago when Roaring Kitty tweeted the... You know the picture of the dog and goes to 39 that was a nice short winner for us the other day today it was gapping up it was on our game plan you can see here chewing was on our game plan so keith gill disclosed you know 6.6 .6 percent stake support was 29.50 resistance was 30.50 the game plan i gave everybody in the pre-market 20 minutes before the market opened was that we long over 29.50 we short under 29.50 that was the setup that easy was the setup that's what we were following and it was that simple so let's let's see how this panned out so as you see this was my level and the level was pretty clear 30 was my pivot i would not short if it moved over 30 but i would stay short as long as it's under over 30. as soon as market opens i see it's breaking the ripster ema clouds and i tell everybody that chewy short half size right so we short chewy and um, I said no longer under 3120 half size 
uh, initially I was looking for a fast scalp versus 30 but when it stayed heavy then I added more 2850 was my first target I was personally trading shares and 28 puts the 28 puts actually um, went on to go to 100 percent so it was it, it this is the same setup I teach again and again you have seen thousands of uh, hundreds of uh, trade recaps you know on, on this same exact setup that we trade every time we trade it right so we can see that let me see how i show you so um so you can clearly see that uh, you know the 28 ports went from dollar 20 all the way to three bucks you know so that was a hundred hundred twenty thirty percent puts on 28 and even if it was heavy i was telling everybody hold on to runners we're gonna fade more because here's the thing once you fill the gap and you do not hold that price then it's, it always breaks and fades more because there's a reason because a lot of buyers are coming in for the gap fill when it doesn't hold they sell they sell and they run away right so that was at 958 i told everybody right here that's we're gonna sell more and then it fades more 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 and then it fades all the way my final target was 25 but we hit 25 35 so that was more than enough and once it curled over 512s that's when we got out so you can see my timestamp here i was short right in the first minute and the, even if you showed it at 29 you know we still got it was a more than a three dollar per share short huge huge win you know even if you shared you shorted the shares you shorted let's say you shorted thousand shares right you risk what thousand um, dollars by end of the day you made two to three thousand so one risk to almost 2.5 to 3 reward trade and definitely 120 30 percent trade on the um, the put side so so very proud of this trade you know very easy the first trade in the community let's go to the next one so next one we're going to discuss is uh, tesla so Tesla was an idea that I have been uh, talking about for a few days before I, even I go into the detail. Let me show you. So Tesla, you know, I have been talking about this uh, chart here when it was at 180. This was a weekly tight, tight, tightness on the weekly. And when it created this hammer, I talked about that 180 is a key level. We can see a reversal in coming days. And that's what happened, right? In a couple of weeks, we are right out breaking out of this trend line. And this is when I posted this idea that we have 198 200 psychological breakout and then we have 50 EMA cloud pivots for a breakout and any pullbacks to 190 needs to hold or that's a risk level and a lot of traders were swinging it and we try to break out on Friday and then today another breakout follow through. So you see that, right? You see here before, you see here. So what is it? 50 EMA on the weekly chart. I have talked about it enough so many times. I discussed that you can make a living on this 50 EMA trade. And this one is not on daily. This one is on weekly, right? So you can see the weekly breakout. So we were ready and it was also over 200, right? So we were ready and you see how, how we ended the day, right? 209 was, that was a price. Okay, let's look at the intraday. Um, let's look at the intraday planning. So, so that was the, initial planning i gave the tesla beforehand right so now let's see what what was happening what was over intraday levels you know what was happening with tesla tesla was had a news from wells fargo so it was a news play as well there was a solid news on tesla then we had our levels of breakout on tesla were 201 and 20, right? 20188, 20320. So Tesla was definitely showing a relative strength right out of the gate. So I told everybody no long under 200, right? So 200 period is a risk because if it breaks 200, you can fill the gap. So, you know, so we have to trade that. And then right, right out of the gate, it broke all the pivots that I gave and it, you know it was on a game plan right down with pushes and i tell everybody it's a long over the pivot ideally everybody is already long over our pivots that i give in the pre-market now it's all about um you know uh, uh getting your targets so the target i gave was 207 and even though the market was bearish tesla was holding up you know we'll talk about the market and um then i told everybody it's a huge huge breakout hold your hold it roll your profits then i gave a 210 target and then we met our 210 target and the next target i gave was 212 and we met our 212 target as well you know we did close when it was breaking this 512s we did close our position 
and um, you know we did close our position but then it reclaimed it reclaimed 512 then you get back in and your stops are again at that 210 area you see this flag breakout you see that uh, reclaimed 512s you get back in you trade that flag breakout your stops right here under this flag and even after that it ran another t dollars so you see how uh, you know how it's a, this is a flag setup you need to identify that but anyway, so this was a big, big breakout. It's still a swing. I told everybody it's a huge, huge breakout. I think some deliveries data tomorrow. So, you know, it's kind of um, people wanted to gamble. I was like, I don't know if you are in profit from 200s. Yes, then you hold it. Otherwise, nobody knows what the deliveries are going to be like. So it was, um, uh, it's, it's, it's anybody's guess what deliveries are going to be. But the point is that if you are in the, if you're already in the money from since the breakout, you then you hold your swing irrespective of what the deliveries do. But otherwise, it's just a gamble. If you're just trying to gamble, expecting deliveries to go crazy, you know, then it's not worth it. You nobody knows it can go crazy. It can go to 220. It's not good. It can just come to 200. So it depends upon what you're trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, accomplish here. But it's rather not to gamble. And only if you have profits, then you hold it. So that was the trade on Tesla all day, huge winner for the community. And, um, you know, so you can see the weekly chart and it's not like today I knew the setup. It was a setup that I gave last week. We talked about it on Friday. Then this morning it was on the watch in the pre-market. Tesla was on the watch, high watch. Then it was, you know, in, in, you know, you can see there what I talked about. And then it had a news from Wells Fargo. So everything brings together for a high conviction, long trade. A lot of traders in the community were long on Tesla. So giving us, an, you know, everybody a nice, nice big day. So now let's look at uh, our trade on Rivian. So Rivian was also, so Rivian was um, same, same setup, right? Rivian was also our day two, day three, because we have been, you know, um, doing a Rivian, um, playing Rivian for some time now since we, you know, it gapped up on our swing and it's just been up and down. But Rivian was on our game plan this morning for reason being, of course, because the Goldman Sachs raised the profit target on Rivian to 14. And um, that's why it was on one main watch. So 1320, 1350, those were our two levels. And levels were so clean on Rivian I mean it's it was like no-brainer and there was a risk was so defined risk such a defined risk here on Rivian you can clearly see that you know yeah you can clearly see that how levels were so while we were busy in Tesla same sector so we Rivian was falling right behind told everybody Rivian confirmed the long from the game plan you know relative strength 1450 was my target and you know I gave this uh, breakout in the pre-market 1320 was 1350 bullish versus the cloud as soon as 1350 breaks you take long you put your stops at 1330 or 1320 and then you ride the long trade nice nice win there you know dollar per share profit was a good one all right, let's look at some other trades. We were actually short this morning on semiconductors, NVIDIA, AMD, SMCI. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll discuss more when maybe when I talk about our QQQ shorts this morning. Um, but just to talk about the semiconductors, if I want to show you the SMCI. So you say, I, here's you go, right? I was watching SMCI for long as well. But when market is heavy, you see Qs are heavy here. There's no reason to be long and when you see this this area right here did not hold and it's bearish right so you, there's no reason to long it when it's bearish so we do not long it anything which is bearish and breaking all our pivots if you want to go see the pivots i gave in the pre-market so we had 815 825 so as soon as both of them broke 815 clean level 825 clean level you showed it right i told everybody bearish no long only long over 830 should fade to 800 780 was my next target and I told everybody 780 tra target met, hold a little bit more, and then we hit 774, 775. The puts really went crazy for the community. So this was a morning trade on SMCI. You can see the timestamp guidance. And it was the same for NVIDIA. We were uh, short on NVIDIA as well. And, um, you know, I personally was uh, not trading that one. So you can see that clouds breaking down here. And then it was heavy because queues were heavy. 
and I said no longs, no longs, short there to 120. I gave 120 target. It actually went to almost 119, you know. But SMC, I was a better short. But if if you got an Nvidia good entry, that was good. Of course, then market reversed, market uh, kind of bounced back, and these things bounced back. But I was not part of those trades. My interest was this morning short trade, and those were the winners uh, for us nicely at the open, and of course the QQs. And we can also talk about AMD here. So AMD was a short because, you know, this is the new indicator that I released. Um, uh, Ripster, MTF clouds, you can, multi time frame clouds, you can go to trading view and you can find it under my name. So you see how it's breaking down to the 50 EMA and then this is 20 EMA. So 50, 55 EMA cloud and 20, 20 one EMA cloud and it's always bearish once it breaks that and you can see the levels I gave on AMD was 161, 160, 50. So those were the two levels that I um, you know provided in the pre-market and it's simply once those levels break as per the system that we use and that um, you know system I use so we, we clearly know that it's a short under those those two pivots and that was a nice fade you know it you know hit 153 from 160 you can it's a beautiful, beautiful trade in the community. There's a nice, nice call out by a member Wick on AMD. Uh, he called it on 940. So I always give shout out to our community traders who are giving us nice, good ideas. And I told everybody do not buy AMD because, um, you know, and then yes, then later down the road, it get, did give a curl, curl setup, but not convincing, but there was a curl. It failed here. Then it tried to push there, but uh, the main trade was a short in the morning. All right, let's look at the other setup we had this morning was DKNG. So DKNG was on our game plan this morning because it had some news. The profit target was lowered by Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is not like, not kind of a big, big uh, analyst, but still it's okay. But anyways, the support pivot was 38.20 and resistance was 38.50. So as soon as 38.20, as per the system, you it's a bearish, you short it, right? And I think I did mention it in the community as well, um, but uh, you know, bearish from the game plan. So you can see I mentioned it right over at 935s and then we kept on fading, 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 faded to from um, 3780, 38 bucks all the way to 3640 bucks. So it was a nice, nice trade. You know, again, it all depends on your pre-market planning. Any tra trade you choose, you wanna trade, depends upon that. But these trades like DKMG, Chewy, you know, these are always uh, little good volume um, trades. You know, just have to make a judgment call what to take. You know, I don't, I can't trade everything, right? But I have to guide my community through all the trades. But it was a beautiful setup, had a news, had a catalyst, just showed it under the pivots I gave and, you know, make money on the puts. So we also had a loser today on the news play CEG. You know, it was an amateur move and I mentioned the community that long watched the pullbacks to 207, but the 207 pullbacks did not hold. It faded all the way back to 203. So you cut right away, take your loss here at 204 for $3 loss uh, per share, you know. So yeah, so that was CEG, the loser for today. It happens, right? If the trend you know the reason for it was a loser because you know the levels were not clear so it probably was not a good idea and the volume was not there so i always learn like what i can do better next time why was it a loser and also you see that one hour was still bearish on on c you know ceg one hour is still bearish so we just have to make that judgment call you know how to handle this um, this trade but um, did not work was a loser all right, uh, let's look at, uh, now we're gonna look at um, Snow. So Snow again was on our game plan. You remember, um, you know, Snow had a buy rating by Goldman Sachs. Bullish bias if 137 holds for long. That was the pre-market plan. And um, and also I've been talking about this these charts. I've been posting these charts, the cloud rotation, how Snow is so good. Um, you know, uh, MDB, Snow. I've been talking about these names for a while now, right? But um, but you see that initial fade, pull back, and then when you reclaim the clouds, that's where you long. Your stops are right under here on 137s, and then you know it's a breakout over here. So Snow was a nice long. But important thing to note is that I've been um, so you see that high watch, check the game plan, hold till the clouds hold. That's what I told everybody because. You know, this is a rotation and I've been talking about, we'll talk about uh, next about MDB, which is, uh, you know, same sector, 
because there's a rotation happening in the clouds and cyber sector. If you watched my video last week, I talked about all these sectors, the clouds, right? And um, let's go to the next one, maybe we discuss. You know, I discussed all that. I even, you know, posted a lot of these setups in my chart ideas. Let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, MDB, right? So MDB gave the 240 risk. That was a gap trade that was from our chart idea. And it was in the gap. And today MDB went on to go to, uh, uh, you know, push higher, 263. So now you can move your stops higher. You can move your stops at 248, 250. And um, even, um, you know, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so it was from this this idea. I even tweeted about it. I have the tweet out as well, how the cloud rotation was happening on so, a lot of these setups, right? If you look at uh, other setups that I discussed, you know, let's look at some other setups or uh, look at the workday setup. So that's one I was mentioning, right? Then I was talking about now, look here now, this was now and look, it's breaking out. And, uh, you know, I had talked about CrowdStrike, CRWD. I talk, CRWD is actually ready to break out. It's like a beautiful setup right now. And then we had then we had talked about ZS, Z scalar, and look at that Z scalar breakout. Just a beautiful breakout. And then we had talked about this um, uh, PNW, right? So PNW is also one of our swings, and you can see the, how it's holding up, cup and handle. So all these are the cloud rotation I've been, uh, I've been discussing uh, for a while. And that's why MDB was a great trade for us, right? Because you identify the sector, the rotation, all that. So that makes all of these A plus trades. You can swing trade, invest in them, beaten down the rotation. You know, you see um, beautiful rotation we discussed last week. And you can see I discussed rotation of bunch of names, Workday, Now, MDB. So all of them are just, just going, right? So you see I discussed CRM, Zscaler, Adobe, Snow, Okta, many more names I've been talking about. And they have been, um, they have, you just see the flow, flow, flow. Look at Okta, you know, look at that name, you know, how it it's, it was pushing. So, um, cloud stocks winners right so these are all the cloud stock winners id and that the community was executing on all these names like mdb and others right so so just wanted to point out hopefully you guys followed the last year's last week's instructions and um, made some money on these cloud names all of them beautiful beautiful winners so hopefully yeah uh, you guys learned about all these cloud stock rotation winners you know so all right, next we're gonna quickly look at Nike. So Nike is was one of our day to day three setups. It was a top day to day three setup. You can see that 7540, 75 support, resistance was 76, 76, 25. Um, I'm not gonna really spend too much time on this fade. I'm gonna talk about this curl, which was over our 76 and 25, um, you know, um, breakout. And this was all guidance by Win today in the community. So you can see how Win was guiding. Curl on the clouds versus 74.80. He gave you the stops, and then it's all about our 512 curl, and then it's our our 34.50 curl, and you know it's just uh, just a matter of riding all the curl setups to high higher up. So that was a nice, nice, nice um, trades and um, you know guidance by win, and um, of course it was on our day two, day three charts. Uh, let's quickly look at some other other plays today. There was Apple. So Apple was along today and Apple was nothing complicated about Apple today because once it was over our resistance pivots to 1189 to 1270, then that was it, right? So we were just pushing um, continuously into the um, um, the flag breakout all day. You just have to ride the cloud. So a lot of traders did really good. Um, just last one quick few few trades AVGO was our good breakout trade this today in the community we had levels on AVGO 1622 1640 1586 was support um, you know there's just the breakout alert went in you know I told everybody about this flag that was the early 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 call out on the flag and then we had this AVGO um, you know 
go from here right so it was sideways and then they asked me about AVGO on the voice I told everyone we are flagging and then I told everyone about this break breakout and the target I gave was 1650 and it was just a simple simple trade you know you take this flag breakout your stops should be here in the clouds you're risking like five dollars to make like twenty dollars so you know that was a good trade uh, another one we we'll quickly talk about is VKTX. It, it's it's a swing versus 50, and we have we have talked about it a few times now. I tweeted about the flow versus 50 and told the traders to get back in. We were initially long it as well. This was again the moving after the upgrade. Once the tier ones upgrade, you see the follow through, right? So um, yeah, you can check my Twitter feed as well. I've been talking about the stocks for some time. Nice, nice uh, so far. So now we're just going to look at QQQs and then we just want to talk about the morning short we had on Qs. You see this fade, this big candle. This was a morning 10 a.m. trade on Qs. I was not on voice, so I was trying to give the short, um, you know, on the, um, uh, on, you know, let's see if I can find it. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So might have to search it quickly. So you can see that queues were heavy at open so far, no longs, I told everybody. And, um, you know, I said, okay, to short scalp, the target, first target is the pre-market lows. And it actually gave more fades to everyone. Then it tried to push, fail the, fail the 512 clouds, and then came back down again. So was, that was our nice short winner in the morning. You can see here um, all my comments on QQQ shorts. Um, you know what was happening spy was joining QQQ as well and that was really nice um, so I just other thing I just want to discuss on QQQ is um, the breakout so there was this flag you know I'm just not gonna spend too much time I just maybe I can just show you those executions that I had on queues so let's see right so here so you see that this was the flag when I saw this flag middle of the day you know you could trade these curls I did not this was a 512 call 3450 call but this was a QQ flag. You see, this is a nice flag. It keeps selling, keep getting bought. When I saw this hammer being formed, that gave me conviction that, you know, there's a big buyer and the shorts are gonna cover here and it, should, it will push. So that's why I told everyone it's a flag setup now and the prices are starting to go in. I immediately got my market order on my lottos and they really went, um, you know, almost 100% for me. So that was a very, very good trade on queues for me personally. Really, uh, really did well on those. So this was a trade. So you should, you can see the timestamp and you can see timestamped comments. So that was a QQQ trade. All right, guys, um, that's it for today. Decent day. I was not really on the voice today. So, but, I, you know, we still had a good, good day and uh, hopefully... You guys have a nice day. You want to come trade with me? We are running our um, um, July, uh, 4th of July promo. A lot of discounts you can join. Do not come for alerts. Come for the community. We are adding some more tools so that you don't have to buy the tools outside. You know, we are working with some more um, tools like book map and all others should be available in the community for you guys to, you know, use all the tools um, that we already have. Anyways, thank you. See you guys later. Take care. Bye.